Good people, welcome back to part 5 of I Am Dead Walkthrough. I know how that sounds, but yeah. Alright, I want to make sure I'm actually recording. Sweet. Now, let's get back to it. Oh, slow down, Sparky. I need to get some things straight. No time, Morris. We need to find the next prospect. Well, it's just that I don't quite understand what we're doing. We're looking for the custodian. Well, I get that bit, Sparky, but what does the custodian have to do exactly? Oh, well, um, it's hard to explain with your human words, but uh, the custodian kind of mingles with the island becomes a part of it. A part of the rock, uh, the volcano. Yes, the rock, and the sea, and the animals, and plants. The custodian becomes a part of all of these things. It becomes part of the island spirit. And you give up being a ghost? Yeah, well, a walking around talking kind of ghost. Stop being someone who can go into the west. It's quite a sacrifice. Oh, wow. Oh, no wonder Val doesn't want to fill those shoes. Aggie must be a legend. Ah, oh, she really is. I always thought there are those folks destined to be mayors and, I suppose, custodians. And then there are people like me and Val, destined for smaller lives. What? Small? Morris, your heart is as big as the island. Everyone knows that. Yeah, I suppose I'm more like one of those island oddities in the museum. Yeah, and they were always the visitors' favourites. Now, we need to move on. Next up is Ogden Beckett, in the old town. Ogden it is. I'm right behind you, Sparky. Ernest, heartwarming. Really makes you feel like you're part of the crew. These two... I know everyone else, it's A grade performances, A performances from a cast of unknowns, but man, these two who plays Morris and Sparky, they just kill it. I am very curious and I'll have to look in between streaming who voices these characters, my gosh, they they deliver A-list performances from a cast of unknown. I'm actually generally impressed. That's credit. Give credits where it's due. The performances are top notch. Too bad no one's really gonna play this game. I won't buy this game. And I know the reason why I won't buy this game, but anyway. So, Ogden next, eh? I'll be glad to see him again. Hmm. His music always hurt my ears, but he was good at chin scratches. Oh, <laughs> lovely guy. Oh, look! The fairy's coming in. There'll be loads of tourists all over this quayside soon. Well, I suppose they won't get in our way much anymore, eh, girl? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, you know, being the cow of you being dead and all that. Ogden Beckett. He was born in 19... Hold on. 1948, and he died in 2007. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's read a little bit about this guy. Okay, Ogden was a talented... Uh, Oh. Interesting. Alright, time to look at the walkthroughs. We can speed through this and actually figure what's going on. Wow, this is well crafted in terms of artistic direction. I imagine this wasn't like two too long, but I feel like a good amount of hours went into this. You could tell that the developers really took their time to craft this type of art style. I'm actually impressed. I will give them that, or give the team that. Okay, so see, uh, okay, seaside. It's, we're heading to the seaside shop. S seaside, uh... <sighs> Seaside, Seaside, by the Seashore. Man, that's such a tongue twister, even to this day. Ah, there's the memory.
Ah, oh, he has no hair. I remember we was walking home from school, a bunch of us, and I told him my granddad said the lad had a live battery and camel living somewhere in the woods. Oh, the large camel. Huh. Uh, be right back.
All right. Thanks for waiting. Had to take care of something, but yeah, pretty minor. Hope you guys enjoyed the kind of calming music. Let's mix. Uh, let's move on to the next memory. Everyone laughed, but I told them it was true. Ogden didn't believe me. Someone would have seen it. He dared me to climb in and prove it. I told him he'd have to come with me. Sneaking past the big house, we were almost caught by the gamekeeper and had to run. Hell for leather for the woods. We reached the trees out of breath. I was bent double and leant against a tree. Ogden had better breath control and he recovered quickly. He saw it first. The clouds parted, the moon shone down, and Ogden gasped, and then I did too. Was it? It was. The next day, we were kicking ourselves. We had no proof. No one was going to believe us. Fascinating memory. Oh, yeah, I was a couple of years above these chaps at school. Oh, and he's right. No one believed them. <laughs> we gave them so much stick. <laughs> Spartan is right. This guy's heart is as big as he is. He, he does have a big heart as big as the island. Sparky's pretty much on spot on that one. But anyway, next memory. It might be repetitive to just kind of listen to these memories and all that, but it's such a sharp writing and really well done characters, well written characters, you don't mind actually listening to the memories. Even if it does seem like it's repetitive and it's as simple as the gameplay, yeah. Alright. It seems like more memories, so I, I guess I'll... Hey, it's pretty easy. Don't really need a walkthrough to find the memories. It's kind of what I'm doing. Oh, well, here's another memory. Simon Crud. Simon says. It was the day of the island cricket match out on the volcanic sand spit. We had lost to Appledore for the past three years and it was my first year as captain. I didn't want another loss on my watch. Ogden had just come back from New Zealand and told me he'd be up for it. I wasn't sure. I remembered Ogden from school. He was lanky and good in the field, but batting, hmm, not sure. Hmm, quite. Ogden showed up with his own bat. He told me he'd won it in a pub in Dunedin and that it had belonged to a famous New Zealand player. I wondered whether I should put him into bat at all, but Ogden whispered to me that he'd been playing on deck all the way home. I knew Ogden wasn't a bluffer, but he was never the guy who got picked for the first team at school. Still, I had nothing to lose. So, did Ogden suck at cricket? I mean, this is cricket, right? With the paddle and all that? Or it could have been hazing. <laughs> Ogden hit a six with his first stroke. We went wild! And just when I thought it must be a fluke, he hit another! And another! He was a machine! A cricket machine! Sorry, I had to do it Ogden once. Ogden hit so many cricket balls out into the sea that we had to stop play. We'd run out! It was a stunning win, and we carried Ogden back across the sand and into the camel. Even though he'd won the match pretty much single-handedly, he insisted it was all down to the bat and plenty of practice. Ogden was solid gold. Smashing, isn't it? Eh, uh, funny, but worth it. How's that? What a great day that was. <laughs> and we've beaten Appledore every year since. 
Those poor chaps never did recover from Ogden's incredible batting. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Oh, I started using that. How's that? Ah, uh, video games. Alright, then there's gonna be another memory. I mean, this is the whole stick. Looking for memories, mementos, to progress the plot. Very simplistic. But that's kinda how it goes. Okay, so in order to unlock one of the memories, we definitely need to find mementos and... Sally Maze, okay. Ah! The Crab Shack! The Crab Shack! Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm thinking of Love Shack? Love Shack? Okay, uh, give me just one second. Okay, now I'm actually back. Alright. I know, it's kind of odd for me to kind of like mute myself and go back, come back. Yeah, yeah, it's busy, busy life. There we go. Well, obviously I'm going to zoom in with the person with the memory bubble right there. Hey, what you thinking? Sally Mapes? 
Wait. Ogden's widow. Oh. Oh yeah, right. We were 14 when we started going out. Me and my friend Cassia had started a beach clean at the weekend, and Ogden turned up with his mate Godfrey. I had no idea Ogden liked me. He was the tallest in our year, and we all fancied him. By the time we reached the little cove at the north end of the beach, he'd asked me to come to a concert he was playing in. I said yes. Okay, I, I, I know I'm gonna love. I, I think I'm gonna like this memory. This one... Everyone's been in this boat. All right, why not? We'd been going out for a few years when I applied to Floristry College on the mainland. I didn't tell Ogden. I didn't believe I'd get in and didn't want him to think I was trying to get away from him. Ogden might have looked mature and confident, but he was a gentle soul, not nearly as sure of himself as he looked. Oh. But I did get in, and he was gutted. I felt terrible. I didn't want to hurt Ogden. He said he didn't mind, but I could see he was covering. My last week on Shelmerston was really hard. Every time I saw him, it felt so strained and I couldn't sleep. Aww. Finally, on my last night, I made a decision. I would take an apprenticeship at the garden center on the island instead, so we could stay together. It felt like the right thing to do. I would tell Ogden in the morning. But when uh. I opened the door the next day, I found Ogden's sousaphone left on the doorstep. I was terrified. What did it mean? What had he done? No, seriously, what does that mean? I mean, when a significant owner puts a sousaphone right in the doorstep of your place, you don't know what the heck he's... what they're doing. You don't know what that means. I'm sorry, what's the metaphor of that? I ran down to his house, my heart in my mouth. His mum, she never did like me, was a little bit smug. She told me Ogden had sailed off to New Zealand. He was headed to Christchurch, she said, and didn't know when he was coming back. Oh. Then she shut the door. So you gave up your dream to go to a lavish university to get educational advancement and career advancement, to be specific, and then home pretty much uh, your 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 love or soulmate went to New Zealand and left you. <laughs> Man, <laughs> significant otherwise, yeah, a significant other would be freaking pissed and devastated. I was more than a bit tearful, but you know, looking back. I think we both needed to have a bit of an adventure. Wow, that's a real mature way. And then he came back to marry you. Huh. I mean, you guys didn't have a long distance relationship, but he came back to marry you after his adventure to Zealand. Realistically, I feel like he would have just found another woman. You would have found another man. And you guys would have moved on with your lives. But he came back for you specifically to marry you. It's kind of... It's tragic, but it's beautiful that he got back together. Yikes. Yeah, these memories are... I spent a lot of time with Sally during this period. We used to meet up quite often when she returned from Floristry College, and I was working at the museum. For a while, I thought maybe we would get together. But she always seemed a bit... out of reach. Uh, sort of distracted. Well, makes sense now. Huh, so Morris had a thing for for Sally. So Morris and Sally would have got married. Uh, huh, that, that's an interesting nugget. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense. Wait, Morris? I I'm sorry, Morris just seemed so obsessed with the museum that he didn't have a love life, but that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, how about that? Seriously, these memories are just too well written. Sharp writing with excellent characters. Hmm. I, what is, what's this feeling? Enjoyment. Enjoyment of looking at stuff. Alright, let's look for the mementos now. Okay, so it looks like we're looking for a porcelain camel. So we had to go to the Lucky Dip, <laughs> really, in the uh, shop. Okay. Well, that's a ridiculous game. The Lucky Dip. 
Hmm. Well, the C side, C side. Okay, so now we gotta find the lucky dip. These memories are just too well done. It really, you really get the sense of like, oh, hold on. Okay, now we're looking for the porcelain. Yeah, camo. All right. Did I find it? So obviously a made-up animal. Humans will believe any old rubbish. Uh, y yeah, okay. Ah, uh, British humor, rubbish, and all that. <laughs> I gotta admit, I found Ogden's um, history in his background pretty very fascinating. But Val and Pete's story, yes, I remember the first character's name and yeah and Val we just finished it recently so it's still fresh in my mind but yeah something about Ogden is just kind of infectious in his positivity and just his childhood and it's it's really in, not intricate it's really really great attention to detail learning about these characters because it's done in a kind of like respect to them but in a heartwarming way they're not treating them like they were they were douchebags they were uh no, they're kind of really, all these people, people who really knew these characters, like really friends, families, lovers, they really give kind of like a very heartwarming and very nostalgic feeling about them. Like respectful. It's not being, like they were just remembering the best parts of them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. This game is fascinating. It really is too bad that no one's going to play this game. 27 minutes. All right. I'm dedicating 50 minutes in this one, or at least an hour. And I'm then getting the scent of Grinkins again, Morris. I'll pop up to let you know when we're close to one. What is up with you and Grinkins? You really like those. I mean, there's really no incentive to do Grinkins. I think they're just for additional dialogue and trophies, <laughs> mostly trophies. All right, now we have to go to the Harbor Arm to find that next memento. So let's do it. There's a bee felt. That's quite interesting. Ah, oh, Henry, uh, Nang Carol. Oh, he's a bootlegger and a music teacher. I remember when a young Ogden asked to join the Shelmiston Silver Band. I recognized his talent immediately. All right, another interesting thing to learn about. play anything, that lad. Literally anything. Wait, does that apply to any musical instrument? Like, so he can play piano, French horn, sousaphone, as he left on his, um, his childhood flame, Sally, and just everything? Because right now he's holding a French horn. Eventually he settled on the sousaphone, which he always insisted on playing with his lucky bronze mouthpiece. Huh. Considering that, yeah, I, yeah, I know what he means by mouthpiece. When I was in March Japan too, having a clean and uh, efficient, shiny mouthpiece works wonders for your musical instrument. In other words, don't lose your mouthpiece because you ain't playing that musical instrument. And I know how that sounds. One evening after the Silver Band played a storming concert in the Camel, Ogden and Sally got it into their heads to go for a night swim in the harbor. Young love and all that. Uh, you Ogden know. left his mouthpiece behind. 
And when we came back the next morning to pack up, it had disappeared. Of course it did. It really rattled him. Ogden was worried he wouldn't be able to perform without it. But of course, next time we played, he was just as good as ever. Didn't need any lucky mouthpiece, our Ogden. <laughs> he could play anything, that lad. I... What is that one? I mean, it's really shaped. I... It's not oboe. It's definitely not clarinet. I have no idea. Well, as I said, basically a music enthusiast. Ogden was so talented. A real virtuoso. Oh, I love listening to him play. Oh, speak for yourself, Morris. It was a terrible racket. Hey, don't... Sparky! Shut up. A music enthusiast. Yeah, if the guy could play, the guy could play. Give, give him respect on that. Just saying. What's this feeling? I'm enjoying this way too much. Yeah, I'm enjoying this way too much. And I know why. Maybe it's because I just... Maybe I just became older, so I have a finer appreciation for stuff that I wouldn't enjoy as a kid. And that's true for anybody. I mean, stuff that you enjoy as your kid, you were probably very... There was a specific genre that you would only try. And then when you get older, everything just like, you know, I actually enjoyed this. Or I have appreciation for this because when I was a kid, I was very obsessed with JRPGs and that was the only thing I play. I played shooters, but not to a like a meticulous detail or just like, oh my gosh, Call of Duty rocks. Well, Call of Duty was good back in like 2009 and so on, but Wait, 2009? No, I guess it's 2007 to be specific. But yeah, I did not play any other genres. So, just the fact that I have more appreciation for different genres, and I, it, it was, it wasn't something that I just gained interest like immediately. No, it was interest I gained over the years as a gamer. So, as a result, I am more appreciative of different genres. I mean. Take what you will, just saying. Okay, so we have to look at a telescope, apparently. Which is right there. Alright, let's grab that bad boy. After we get past the apple. I, why are there apple characters? That's interesting. Hello, that's a penny. A three penny piece. Oh, uh, I guess we can't unlock it yet. I guess we have to go to an arm memento. Okay, so let's go to the Gaston's Perry fish doll. Oh, we will fight like Gaston in the na 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 na. Have to do that reference. Okay. Ah, uh, old town Perry like this. It's quite nice. Okay, where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, so we're looking for a pallet of fish. Yeah, looks like we found it. Or not. Oh. Okay, I guess that was the power fish. 
Ah, there we go. Oh, hey, Morris, remember when we found one of these heavy balls on the beach and I dropped it on your toe? Ouch! It must have hurt like a son of a god. Okay, so we found that. So now we're looking for a funnel. At the Skylark. The Skylark. I think I saw it all the way over here. Ah, I found it. Now we have to go to the the whiskey stall. Ah, there it is. Or sorry, it's the whiskey still. Now we have to find the funnels. Did I find it? Did I find it? Ah! Found it! Did I find it? Oh wait! There we go! Interesting! This kind of white loaded screen. They seem to have been using it as a funnel. These bootleggers are very resourceful. Wait, are you talking about the actual like bootleggers still in movies? Uh, I still in are pirating movies all that, or are you just talking about bootleggers in in literal sense? Sorry, you have to be specific like that. All right. What's the next one? Like a ship in a bottle. Message in the bottle. Okay. All right, crab shack. That's where we need to go. Oh, well, made it. Okay, so we have to look at the display shells. That is a big crab claw. My gosh. Okay. Yawning? That means I have to try to stay awake. Alright, so the shelves. Alright, where's the big bottle? Where are you? Where are you? Now, it was on the other side. That's on me. Ah! Neat! How did that get in there? Skill. Well, I mean, in the terms of her doggy sense of uh, wonder, I, I guess she wouldn't actually figure that out. 
Okay, now to find the last memory. Okay, so we found that, so we found that. Okay, Mr. Talent. Yeah, we already found Sally's memory, we already found Hanbury's memory, Simon Says memory. Oh, actually, no, there's another memory with Sally, my dad. So, yeah, we had to go back to the Crab Shack, which I was literally at. It makes sense that the last memory of Ogden's life would be with Sally again. Wait, where is she? So, I miss her? I could have sworn I did not miss her. Where the heck is she? Oh, she's in the harbor. Man, that old woman was fast. Yeah, there she is. That's actually kind of impressive. Man, she was pretty fast. Grandma still got it. Wait, wait, wait. I missed Ogden so much. And for the first month, there was no letter at all. I took my place at college on the mainland without knowing how he was feeling. It was a shock how low it made me. Even though I was working with flowers, my dream job. I threw myself into making friends and working as hard as I could. I wondered about him traveling the world without me and without his sousaphone. What he was doing, how he was feeling. Most women would have been pissed that you just left them in kind of an old town like this. Yeah, most women would, would have probably been super pissed that he just straight up left her to go travel the seas. The letter started <clears throat> arriving, and it was amazing. Each one came with a penny from a different country. One from Valparaiso, another from Dakar. I wrote back and told Ogden about my course, trips to Kew Gardens, which were amazing. And Ogden told me about his voyage, watching dolphins and flying fish, crossing the equator. Sometimes we were both lonely. We poured out our hearts to each other. In a funny way, I think the letters made us closer than ever. Huh, so a long distance relationship in a kind of a literal sense in terms when of love. When he arrived in Christchurch, he'd send me flowers pressed in his letters. I sent him a shell from home, and then he sent me a New Zealand halfpenny. It was my favorite. On one side was the head of a Maori tiki. Ogden told me it was lucky. I came hmm. back to the island, and when my father died, I opened up my own florist shop on the quay. I tucked the halfpenny under the front step for luck, polished up Ogden's sousaphone and put it in the window. They both brought me luck and the shop flourished. One day, Ogden showed up at the shop, completely out of the blue. He told me there was nowhere like Shelmiston and no one like me. I was so thrilled to see him, I asked him to marry me there and then. He said yes. Um, wouldn't it be the opposite? Like, he proposed to you, but... Um, uh, okay. Well, that's... that... Aw, that's... Aw, that's sweet. That is very sweet. The Lord of Shelmerston. It always pulls people back when they try to move away. They were a lovely couple, Sally and Ogden. Or maybe they actually legit wanted to, he wanted to move away, but yeah, I, I guess. But after experiencing the memory of Sally, I can see why he came back. I mean, come on. All right, uh, okay, so the last memento is around here, and we were just here. Oh, right, it's at the, the telescope. Right, 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 right. Because I was just literally here. Huh. They would call this a bookend, or... I guess we return to the scene of the crime, or something. Oh, well, anyway.
Gotta get all those camera shots of the New Zealand three penny piece. Yet one good thing about being dead, I'll never have to deal with counting change again. Yeah, and taxes and bills and well, yeah, you don't have to deal with the <coughs> government. Anyway, no, anyway. Ah, uh, yes. A very distinctive odor indeed. I reckon I can find him from this. Here I come, Ogden. What? What was it? Basically his mouthpiece that he played the sousaphone? Or was it the fact that he smelled like literal fishes because he was on a sailing ship? Technically a marching bin. Alright, Sparky. I enjoy the sequence. It's it's repetitive, but I enjoy it. I find this amusing. Maybe it's an art style or something else. Hey, I think I saw it. Follow me, spirits of... Shalmanston, I guess? Alright, let's find... Meet this... The acclaimed Ogden. Just give us a wink and play the sousaphone? Oh, 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 this feels so good! <laughs> Terrific to see you, Morris! Oh, it's great to see you too, mate. Have a stretch, Ogden. We have a question for you. Sparky! Owner of the very finest singing voice on the island. What can I do for you? Well, it's about the custodian. We need a replacement. Ah, yes. I've heard that volcano rumbling. Poor Aggie must be very tired. Yes, she is. We need a replacement. Oh. Oh, you want me to be the custodian? Well, I, I, I'm honored, but uh, I can't. Are you sure? The island is in dire need. I know, and I sympathize, but Sally is the other half of me. I need to watch over her. Everything else may be changing, but she's my constant, and I'm hers. I need to go into the West with her when it's her time. Yes, I... Yeah, I understand. You two always did have an enviable connection. Mm. We were very lucky to find each other. And I'm still lucky just... just to watch over her. Makes this place still feel a bit like home, even as it changes. So I'm going to stay. Uh, but listen, once you've found the custodian, come back and enjoy a sniff of that beer in the camel with me, eh? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, Hogton. Well, uh, see you around. But, no, I, I, I get the humor in terms of like, have a sniff of the, that beer. I was like, wait, he said sniff. Okay, now I get it. Yep, now I get it. There we go. Well, he was an interesting chap. Yeah, that volcanoes. Well, after all these years, Ogden still carries that torch for Sally. I wish I'd been so lucky. Things I should have done. You were busy with the museum, Morris. And you did walks, and you did fetch, and belly rubs, and... <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, yes. I was very busy. Thank you for reminding me. You did plenty. But now you need to find the next custodian. Hey, how long has Aggie been custodian? Oh, a little while now. You've met her, actually. I have? Well, what? her body, anyway. In the museum. What? Her, her body? In, in, in the museum? Oh, wait! That's right, Morris. The bog lady. 
the bog lady of Shelmerston. What, that's Aggie? Mm-hmm. Well, that's her body anyway. Her spirit is all around us, of course. But Aggie is Bronze Age. Uh, Three thousand years. She's been custodian all that time. Yep. Well, no wonder she's tired. More tired every minute. We need to get to the next prospect. Greg Litherland, at the campsite. Hmm, Greg. Okay. Huh. Yeah, you know, the game doesn't really rush you to impending doom of volcano erupting, but hey, here we are. Oh. Now a campsite, apparently. The one part of the island I never spent much time at. I never cared for camping. Although we did find a lot of Bronze Age goods down here. Really fascinating bits and bobs. I reckon this was an important place once, and not just to shell us. Oh, oh, there's so many great smells here. Oh, and so many rabbits to chase. Stop it, Sparky, you have a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I suppose I do like it better up here now I don't have to worry about combing all those burrs out of your fur. At least this part of Shelmerston isn't changing too much. Yes. Now let's sniff out Greg. Yeah, I always found Greg a bit difficult. Huh? That business with the owl of his. Uh, he wasn't a bad guy at heart. Just liked animals a bit more than people sometimes. Maybe. But who can blame him? Let's find some people who remembered him. Dig a little deeper. <sighs> Memories of Greg Leatherland. Here we come. Yeah, Morris, you don't seem very keen on Greg, but it doesn't seem like Greg was a people person in the first place. So, well, wait, so if he was uh, like an animal lover, wouldn't he love Sparky like a lot? Well, anyway, be right back again. This really is common music. If you're doing a simple, I guess, memory puzzle in a sense, then yeah, I guess this would be the type of music you would play in very calming sections and all like that. Alright, so Greg Letterland, he was born in Hold on. 1969 and he died in 2016. So wait, what year are we in? Is it twenty no no no, wait. Morris died in, I think he said 2020 at the beginning. I'll have to look at my first video. So I guess we're in the kind of the modern age, in a sense, or the present day. Okay, so Greg ran Nap Hill campsite, where his prickly demeanor and insistence on rules were notorious. He was a king, bird watcher, nature lover, and ca oh, campaigner for the protection of Marlowe's. A huge fan of Scheller racing, Greg captured the excitement of the sports with his photography. Interesting. Or photographers. Photographies. Huh, a little tongue tied today. But I'm okay with that. Alright, so now we have to talk to these two people at the Kept Site main office for this memory. Ah, oh, okay. Wow, really? It's been 55 minutes? But so much happened. Yeah, I mean... Memory time! I only knew Greg briefly, from the summer that I took over the campsite and he retired. He seemed harmless enough, if a bit strange, living in that nasty little caravan. Interesting. As part of his 
official handover process. He gave me a big box of rule books that I was apparently supposed to give every camper when they arrived. Oh, so he really was a stickler for that type of thing. Interesting. I couldn't believe them. The amount of inches apart each tent had to be. The angle of pitch permitted colours of guy ropes. Oh my gosh, so he was a stickler and he was pre-COVID. No skipping ropes, marbles, conkers or throwing games. No singing with hand drums. What the actual? I built a huge fire on the beach, invited the whole site for a big party and burned the lot. Ah, oh, okay. But then, awkward, Greg showed up. I guess he'd been collecting some things from his caravan and came to see what the noise was all about. You could tell he wasn't comfortable, but he sat down and tried to make conversation. I told him how beautiful I thought Shelmerston was, and he started telling me all about the wildlife here and the best places to spot birds. He was actually quite a sweet guy. Yeah, okay. He must have noticed what we were burning, but he never mentioned it. That was the last time I saw him. I always felt a bit guilty. I mean, I got him wrong. He wasn't that bad. Oh. So, well, they always say don't judge a book by their cover. That's a good thing she kept one of them. It must be around here somewhere. Possibly. Wow. All right. So, a guy who is a stickler for roles and all of that, we finally got to know a little bit about him. Intriguing. Intriguing. Okay. Well, let's get this done, and we'll move on. Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> 